city enclave. It is a new developing area, housing, hospitality facilities like hotels, clinics, shopping malls, among others, to make life a bit comfortable or more comfortable for people who are using the airport. So that is the airport city enclave. It's still a developing area. You see, Mike, I've seen that building in the back for the last 10 straight years. It hasn't budged. Yeah, cut that, that big, big building. It seemed like it hasn't been touched for about uh, for, for a number years. of years. Yes, yes, yeah, it, very right. Is it still engineering uh, issues in the um, in the found in, in the foundation? In the, uh, uh, yeah, seriously, the issue behind it, I don't know if it is uh, finance or it has to be more technical that's or combination. That's that's the big building right there, family. Yeah. I mean, it literally, it's, so whatever the issue is, seriously, I don't know, and I don't want to hazard any answer that may yeah, not be accurate. Yeah, this reminds me of the example of the um, of the stadium today, where we we, mm. we sit for like 10, 15 years, yeah. undeveloped, and I guess one day you come and then it's done. Well, uh, you know, at times we have some of these challenges that. Uh, bodies on or that comes about as a result of proper or very adequate planning before take off. Making at times people they go into partnership and somewhere along the line some partners withdraw and then they run into some financial difficulties to make sure that the project that they are embarking on you know, is completed to meet the schedule that they envisage at the beginning of it, or the budgeted, the time budget, you know, at times gets thrown off balance as a result. Or some other issues, they come in as a result of probably changes on the economic landscape. It can also impact on the original budget and, you know, has a negative effect on the originally estimated or emphasized flow, free flow or smooth flow of the project. But yes, sir, when Airport City is completed, it's going to look beautiful. Yeah. And I guess this is uh, another expansion of Airport City on the left. Yeah, the, facility, the open space that is undergoing construction that we are seeing to your left is part of the airport police station. It's a whole area, wow. and I'm suspecting that they are doing some development. Wow. Some of the old buildings have been pulled down, and new developments are coming up, either for the police service or for a different program. I don't have the very uh, accurate information on that. But it's a facility for the Ghana police. That's a lot of land. <laughs> now we are approaching a very important facility. That is the 37 military hospital. 37 military hospital. Why the name 37? One, during the colonial times, the British established forces in their colonies. And when they were going for these world wars, they took forces from their colonies and established hospitals in those colonies to take care of casualties of war. They numbered them. And that of Ghana was the 37th, hence the name 37 Military Hospital. Now that is what is coming up to our right. Initially, its services were limited to only the military, but now it's open to uh, the, civ the civilian population as well. 
So this is 37 military hospital to your right. And they are also running a number of research institutions in there. They've come, they've come a long way. They have a nursing and midwifery training institution uh, uh, that they run in PhD courses in you know trauma and other uh, areas of health delivery. So all this area is part of the military establishment. We will be getting to an important uh, facility in about five minutes. It will come up to our right. That will be the seat of government. That will be the seat of government known as the Jubilee House. Initially, it was called the Flagstaff House. It was the residence and operational center of the commander of the Royal Frontier Forces of the British when they were here. And when Ghana attained independence, because of the secure nature of the place, our first president decided to use it as his uh, official residence and office. But later, the facility was moved to <coughs> the Osu Castle, and the, in the 2000s, it was refurbished. We will soon get there. And I'll point it out to you to come up to your right. And how the hell will cost it? So that is the Flagstaff House to your right. I want you to pay, uh, to take a very good look at the architecture, the design. It is designed in a form of a stool. A stool. A symbolic. Our kings, south from the forest zone, all the way south, are in stool. They sit on stools. So, symbolically, the architecture has been designed that way to let you know that that is a, 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 the presence of a king or an authority. And that is how. That is our White House, the president's office and residence. We are moving in an area that is known as cantonment. To your right, we are passing by Christ the King School and Church, by the Catholic Church. This area is the cantonment, one of the carved out areas by the British. And in those days, it was a no good area for the locals. It was a no-go area for the locals. Now here currently we have a number of diplomatic institutions in here and government establishments in here. But to your right of it you have a mixture of residencies and uh, offices. So this area is called cantonment. In this area, because we have a number of uh, European, you know, diplomatic uh, people from across the ocean and other parts of the world, we have the craftsmen, you know, who produce crafts that those people desire usually using cane, you know, products and all that. To your uh, left, we are passing by the parks and gardens. The parks and gardens. All the green uh, uh, walled area. So this is all part of 